manufactured by a company that everybody has since forgotten, RCA. This is a home theater movie projector and uh, this was purchased actually in an effort to uh, have late night movies under the stars uh, viewing parties uh, so to speak. Uh, paired up with some of those Tiki Tunes Bluetooth speakers that I had reviewed in a previous video of mine. I did have a couple of projectors in the past that I have experimented with, but they were from at least 8 to 10 years ago, and they only had composite AV inputs. No uh, provisions for external speaker hookups, you just got a really craptastic uh, laptop quality built-in speaker that was never loud enough so you could never hear what was playing on screen. This is by no means a professional video projector. Uh, this is just going to be intended for the average Joe looking to watch some movies either in a really big room in their house uh, or outside because that seems to be the in thing to do lately watching movies under the stars once the sun goes down and uh, this seems to get you at least halfway there at least more so than the older projectors did because you have Bluetooth up to 120 inch picture size before it actually degrades to such a point as where you really can't make out what's uh, seen with any appreciable amount of quality there's two HDMI inputs, so you're not limited to composite AV inputs because just about nobody has uh, older devices that just output the composite these days. Everything is HDMI. 50,000 hour LED lamp life, and it has a 40p native resolution, and it's also compatible with 1080p. And something that's rather nice with this offering is that it includes a fold-up 100-inch projector screen. So you don't have to go hunting around from your house or robbing the bed sheet off of your uh, your bed <laughs> and using that as a makeshift projector screen. This one has you covered, at least if you're looking for one 100 inches in size. Unlike projectors of yesteryear, this has Bluetooth, so you can connect Bluetooth-enabled speakers and even headphones uh, for as what they're saying is amazing sound. I would certainly hope so, because I guarantee that if this has any kind of a built-in speaker, it's going to do absolutely terrible. Supports 1080p as well as 1080i, 720p, 576i, 40p, and 40i with an HDMI input, although the native resolution is 800 by 480. Also AV, USB, VGA in puts, and a micro SD card slot. And the supported video formats are reported as being MPEG-1, MPEG-2, MPEG-4. I'm assuming that's realistic media. AVI, realistic media, something or other. QuickTime Movie, Motion JPEG, DivX, and VOB files, which is what you get if you rip a DVD without re-encoding. Supported audio formats, MP3, WMA, picture formats, JPEG, Bitmap, PNG. Super compact size <laughs> includes a remote control, an AC power adapter, a projector screen, two AA batteries, but they're not included. This is the projection screen. Apparently there's different sizes that they could have included. 100 or 120 inch and uh, the scale is either 4 by 3 or 16 by 9 and they give you plenty of these command style peel and stick hooks and these black little strings for I'm assuming uh, running it through the uh, the outer border and that's what you hook on either that or you use that to actually support it and one thing I just noticed is that these are not the command style peel and stick hooks so care should certainly be taken as to where you're placing these because uh, removal of them will most certainly ensure that uh, paint gets removed with the hooks. And here is the projector on box. There's an infrared receiver for the very flimsy remote control. There's actually a pretty chunky power supply that's included with it which is rather surprising. It actually has a fair amount of weight to it like the older uh, transformer based wall warp power supplies. Over here on the front, there's the projector lens covered by an included lens cover. And this serves as your focus ring. Infrared receiver for that remote control I just showed. Headphone output, AV input, micro SD card slot, HDMI 1 and HDMI 2 inputs. So you can have two different devices that you could switch between using the remote control like you would with a TV. There's a USB input and also the DC power port. The USB input will prove to be very convenient because I can just load up whatever I want to play on here to a flash drive connected up to this thing and as long as it's a supported format I should be golden. 
on the back is a VGA input, which I wasn't expecting to find on something that's so that's as consumer oriented as this projector is. But that's a pleasant surprise. There's also an infrared receiver on the back as well. Those two stereo speakers that the box mentioned. Your keystone adjustment over here. Plus or minus 15 degrees. Nothing on this side. And over here on the top is your volume adjustment, play, pause, stop buttons, some controls for navigating the on-screen display and the menus, uh, input selection, a power button, and a U-turn arrow for backing up through a menu. There we go. There's the DVD player. Well, just for testing purposes, I'm going to use the uh, top cover off of one of those plastic storage boxes. I've got the projector plugged in, and its fan is rather noisy, but that's to be expected. Well, this has got to win some awards. Apparently, the uh, threaded hole on the bottom of the projector it's not quite the right depth, that or the thread pitch is different from your regular tripod screw. So I couldn't use that because it was a wobbly mess. I had to just remove that uh, little plate there and instead I have this sitting on the top of the tripod. I mean, what could go wrong? But we are getting something resembling a picture now, giving us the option to choose between photo, music, and movies. It's also reporting up top, if you can just make that out, that there's no USB device currently connected, nor is there any kind of a micro SD card inserted. You can change the aspect ratio of the video output from 4x3 to 16x9. Might even be a good idea to leave that on auto. Noise reduction is set to middle. There's no current way to adjust that, which is rather interesting. Sound mode is, uh, as you would expect, adjust the EQ uh, like you would on a TV. You can adjust the treble, the bass, you can adjust the balance. You can use auto volume as a sort of auto gain control. You can adjust the language of the on-screen display. Bluetooth on and off, restore the factory defaults. You can also flip the panel. And it just timed out now and kicked me back. Well, for testing purposes, I just dug out this old 2009 vacation planning DVD from uh, Disney Parks, Walt Disney World, back when they uh, they gave uh, they sent free DVDs if you requested them. I don't think they do that anymore. And then you switch the input using this little button here, and then you get a, a little menu just like you would on a TV. The top one, which is rather hard to see because the sun right now is an AV input. Then HDMI, HDMI 2, VGA, DVD, or the media player. I'll go to DVD. I can hear it spinning up the disc right now. So now that I'm playing a DVD, I actually can access the menu again. A couple of different options that appear, such as aspect ratio. You could do zoom 2, zoom 1, 16 by 9, 4 by 3, auto, panorama, which depending on what you're projecting on and what kind of video source you have. Could be good to have all those options, but I'll just leave it on auto for now. This is the year to gather with all the people who make you the happiest to celebrate any special moment in your life. Here's where it comes into play, being able to adjust the keystone. If you had this sitting on a table pointing up or on the ceiling pointing down at the screen, you could adjust that lens to straighten out the image instead of being skewed one way or the other. What I ended up doing is actually setting the picture mode to soft. For example, this is with it on the soft setting now. It's just a DVD menu, so it's going to loop back and play the same thing here. But if I go here and change the picture mode to standard and exit out of that now, you can see that where the clouds are and where it says resort, it starts getting, just starts looking overexposed. I mean, you can barely read what it says on the bottom about vacation planning. And if I go to vivid, that's even worse highlights are really blown out and this is kind of par for the course for lower end projectors like this there's really no two ways around this there's a place in everyone's imagination where dreams live luckily there's also a place where they come true Walt Disney World Resort and where exquisite resorts invite you to wake up in the middle of a dream Okay, enough with uh, playing around with DVDs. Let's see if the USB feature works. Well, this isn't quite going to be an all-inclusive test of the formats and codecs that uh, this projector supports, 
but suffice it to say it should be well rounded enough to put it through its paces, paces. I have a JPEG and PNG image file, AVCHD MTS file right from a camcorder, MPEG-4, H.264, MP4 from a uh, video of mine that I output use, uh, rendered out using uh, Serif Movie Plus, a Motion JPEG AVI, a PCM Wave audio file of 320K MP3 audio AVI, uh, video capture from a mini DV tape, and then an iTunes AAC.M4A audio file, which I don't know if it's actually going to support because it's not explicitly mentioned on the box or the manual. And finally, an MPEG-2 standard definition video. Well, after finishing putting the video files on this flash drive, I just came back to discover that we have the infamous bouncing DVD screensaver, this time with strobing rainbow colors as it cycles through the rainbow. But I'm sure we're not here to see the DVD screensaver, so without further ado, let's see what this thing can muster up. I misspelled the word waiting. MP3 playback works. It will let me see the picture <laughs> of some vintage AT&T Merlin Biz 10 phone sets. I don't know why it just went back to the menu. And where's the other image? I could have sworn there was another one on here. All right, shocking revelations here. I was actually accessing the contents off this flash drive while still in the DVD mode, which changes what you can do. So if I go to DVD now and change that, it actually will act as uh, like one of those old DVD players that will try to read the contents of whatever you have connected to a USB port and then you can go through that very primitive menu system and access what's on here but if you were to change the input right now to media player if I select photo and select the uh, they're calling it the C drive which is just this USB port you can see it's giving me a different menu system now where I can look at a little preview and then go to the JPEG image and then I can also play the PNG image, which I wasn't able to do before, which is an old ad for uh, AT&T Merlin phone systems. Oh, and it's even trying to do a uh, transition. It's a little glitchy before, but it seems to have straightened itself out now. All right, let's see what happens if I go to movie. All right, so we have the DVAVI. Let's see what will happen. Okay, it's an unsupported file. Let's try the Motion JPEG AVI. Here we have a clip recorded with uh, one of those uh, Chinese IP cameras. It's a Motion JPEG AVI. Now it did say unsupported audio format, but I don't blame it quite frankly because I know that that camera is actually one I was going to review. It was purchased many years ago, probably at least seven, eight years ago. And the thing records just a weirdo audio format, so it doesn't surprise me that it's not supported. But it is able to play the video. I just use the uh, on-screen controls here, and it is playing right there. Okay, I suppose the ultimate test, because uh, that seems to be its claim to fame. No, not the MPEG-2. The MPEG-4. Okay, it says unsupported file. That's discouraging. Now it's saying video res not supported. Oh, is that because it's too high of a resolution? They don't give you an AV input cable, but it probably will be very close to this style cable, which is used by many of these old Sony Handycams. Well, that's not going to work. I guess this isn't compatible with the uh, 3.5 millimeter AV out uh, breakout cables, if you will, that a lot of the Handycams used. This one... Uh, came with a newer model handicam and you could see what it's outputting right now and the only way I could even get this on the screen was to leave this partially unplugged because if I plug this in all the way it just cuts out and there's nothing on screen see this is what's frustrating about these devices that have USB inputs for playing back videos or music or pictures now, okay I was just about to miss that so I was going through the manual and there's nothing even elaborating upon what are and aren't supported formats uh, using the USB feature of this projector 
in the troubleshooting section of the user's guide just goes on to talk about no image being projected the lamp bulb switching off the image being wider spots on the screen and the brightness is faded and that's it oh well that would explain it <laughs> I guess that was some user error on my part. That was an upscaled video from 1080p to 4K, which I'm sure it doesn't support, and especially doesn't support 60 FPS. All right, this video should be a bit more tame in the resources department. It's an older video of mine, a 640 by 480 MP4 video, low bit rate, 30 FPS. I just realized that I actually forgot to demonstrate the music playing abilities of this RCA projector I've demonstrated so far photo playback and movies but not music so if you go to music and it actually gives you thumbnails if you have album art embedded in your mp3s so I'll play this mp3 first and it actually gives us a sort of uh, level meter here and shows us the information about the track title and artist and the album from which it came and I can go ahead use the on-screen display menu to skip to the next track now bring the volume up can't play too much of that because uh, that's copyrighted but it's a WAV file and it is playing and I could skip to the next one now this is an mp4 uh, this is an m4a AAC audio file encoded with iTunes and it's actually playing which I'm amazed because it wasn't able to do that before using the DVD audio player or file manager it's not getting the uh, metadata for some reason but uh, it is playing so there's that I wonder what happens if I go to info now. Okay, yeah, so it shows us the uh, the bit rate and the sampling rate, but none of the metadata is coming through for whatever reason. That's not half bad, though. At least it's playing. All right, let's go back now. Okay, so uh, it's actually playing back MP4 files. They just can't be at 4K resolution at 60 frames per second. That's just pushing things a little too hard on this thing. But it's working. Come on, focus. This was uh, passing quality control checks in March of 2022. I really don't think I need to test the micro SD card capabilities because that's essentially the exact same thing as using a USB drive. And the HDMI inputs, well, I just I know that's going to work. You just plug it in and it'll start showing up on the screen. So there's really no reason to test that as well. I, my main curiosity with this thing was to see if it could play back, or ha rather how well it played back DVDs and files off of the USB flash drive, because that's what I'd be using it primarily for. And, of course, if you don't have a Bluetooth speaker with which to pair to this projector, you can just use the headphone output as is indicated and elaborated upon in the manual. And it's quite nice to see old and new features brought together for the best of both worlds. You have a DVD player for Luddites like me that still like having physical media. And then for uh, people that, uh, you know, are actually in the 21st century, you have HDMI, USB, micro SD inputs and even a VGA input if you're feeling adventurous. So I've grown accustomed to kind of writing off newer electronic items that are being badged with uh, well-known brand names of yesteryear like Crosley or in this case RCA but I must say that I'm actually pleasantly surprised with its performance. I just wish that its fan was a little quieter, its speakers were a little higher fidelity and uh, that it actually had a standard tripod mount on its underside for use with a regular tripod, which more people are going to have a tripod than they will a dedicated projector mount. But all those nitpicks aside, I have to say that uh, I will likely be using this thing and putting it to use this coming summer.